But it's great to see you uh, and welcome to our time of, of worship uh, here. So uh, we thought it was entirely appropriate to have some Welsh um, music playing. Um, remember Calacan Cal is at five o'clock uh, this evening if you want to come for soup and uh, fire brief uh, and Welsh cakes. Uh, excellent. Uh, and then worship will be 6.30. Reminder that we are meeting together to pray on Wednesday night this week at 7.30 uh, till 9. So please do come along to that. And then the members meeting is a week on Wednesday. Uh, so please, uh, church members, if you could come along to that. Are there any other notices that I need to make people aware of? Uh, no, and isn't it lovely to have the springtime sunshine uh, and chainsaw in the background? <laughs> 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 so, uh, there we go. Uh, Where's the wood? <laughs> uh, so, some reminders as to who it is we're coming to worship this morning. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Father of God, we thank you that we can come and worship you on this magnificent morning. We thank you that we can come before you and say thank you. We thank you for the offer of salvation that you offer, that you uh, provide. And <coughs> the chance that we have of giving you our praise and our worship this morning. Mm -hmm. Enable us to do that, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll stand and sing. Um, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love. I'm righteous, thanks.
it's an amazing privilege, isn't it, that we can say, my Jesus, my Saviour, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. Our topic this morning is hope and what that means for us. Now, hope is a big subject. You can't possibly aim to do it in the next 10 or 15 minutes. And we looked at elements of this in December. For those of you who were with us, does anybody remember this cartoon? Uh, if not, this was the summary. Go back and look at the recording. We looked at how you all hold on to hope. If you remember that when we were thinking about the prophecy and Isaiah about Jesus being born, that that was seven, some 700 years before Jesus was actually born. So if you go back 700 years, the equivalence would have been a prophecy given in 1324, which is um, realised today. So there's a real question about how do you hold on to hope? For I'm not going to preach that sermon. If you want to, it's available on YouTube. But our question this morning is this instead. What have we stopped hoping for? 
what have we stopped hoping for? And a plastic lemon tree plays an important part in this. No, really. Uh, Let me explain. Yeah. Is that really a slide long? Um, no, it hasn't come through. Can you imagine a plastic <laughs> lemon tree? <laughs> <laughs> if you know what it looks like, a plastic lemon tree. So we were away recently, and I saw this plastic lemon tree. <laughs> it was in a dark building and quite cold inside. And I gave no thought to this lemon tree. It was a few metres away. I was looking at it uh, for a few moments, and then I realised that it's a plastic lemon tree. Uh, and, and I had a look around, and I thought, well, it's a dark, cold building. There's no surprise about this at all. And then I heard a voice in my head saying to me, do you think this lemon tree could be real and grow if I wanted it to? Which is a strange question, I'll admit. I, have you ever been asked that question? No. Perhaps not. But it brought me up short as I was reminded that God is all-powerful, unchanging, loving and sovereign. And yet, if I'm honest, I spend most of my time thinking that he isn't always that. Some words from uh, Hebrews, just to remind us and to focus as to where we might go this morning. Hebrews 11, 1 to 3, first off. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. For faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So what, what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And then Hebrews 10, 22-24. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. So, we know that God offers us this hope, and we know that his promises are yes and amen, for he is faithful. But there are times when we either lose hope or we give up on hope. If I can apply a perhaps flimsy sporting context, if your team is drawing nil-nil away from home and you need a goal and you're in the eighth minute of stop injury time... You can always rely on the ref. Yeah. No, you can It's not that. There's always a hope that, the score might, that somebody might score a goal. Don't give up on hope. But we might give up on hope for a number of reasons. It might be for impatience. It might be forgetfulness. It might be a loss of faith. It might be distraction. Or it might be that we're hoping for the wrong things. I still have a hope that God is going to call me to Hawaii to serve him there. It's yet to happen. <laughs> but... If we're honest, those reasons about impatience, forgetfulness, loss of faith, distraction, or hoping for the wrong things are all on us. They're not on God. They're all on us. And some of these are perfectly understandable, and we can do something about them. And we need to remember that God is the, not the one who's changed. Yeah. Hebrews 13 and verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Back in the Old Testament, Malachi 3, 6a, I, the Lord, do not change. And we know that God's power, if God hasn't changed, then God's power, logically, hasn't changed. Consider the creation of the universe. You know, it, it's utterly amazing. Um, uh, all that we know and understand have yet to discover, and the immense power it took to create this. Our God did this. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 3, 20 to 21, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now the word translated immeasurably here is translated as exceedingly beyond measure or my favourite, super abundantly um, elsewhere. This doesn't speak to something that is just enough. This speaks to a reservoir to fill a glass of water. 
God is able to do super abundantly, that's your word for the day by the way, more than we can ask or imagine as a result of his power which is at work in us. And yet, and yet, where have we last where have we lost hope that he can and will act? It's completely understandable that our attitudes and our um, faith are shaped by our experience. And we know that this can be a negative on many occasions is when we remember that God didn't answer prayer, when bad things happen and when we're unable to see God come through. And yet God remained the same yesterday, today and forever. And please hear me right, this isn't a chiding that we've lost our hope. This is a reminder of who God is, of how much he loves us, of how powerful he is, and how much he longs to see his purposes at work within us. This is not a chiding, but is an encouragement for us to reset our minds and hearts this morning, to reboot our hope and enable God to work in us and through us. If we're honest, we can think on occasions that we are simply going through the motions somewhat and that God has forgotten about us. As she approached her, the time of her, the end of her time here on earth, my grandma, who outlived many of her relatives and um, friends, used to say, do you think he's forgotten about me? <laughs> which we used to reply, no, he's just not ready for you. <laughs> Please don't sit there this morning and think that God's forgotten about you. He hasn't. He's not forgotten about you and he still has more for you. Now you might be sitting here this morning thinking it's all well and good for these Christians who have a faith, but this doesn't apply to you. <coughs> Well, that's not the case, because as part of the hope we have, our part of the hope we have is our hope of an eternity in heaven with God. We can do have this hope because, as a result of what Jesus did for us. Not ten minutes ago, we were singing, "My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' love and righteousness." We've all gone away from God and rebelled, and these actions are called sins and prevents us from being in God's presence. The way we can be set right with God again is through forgiveness from him. And this is made possible for us by Jesus' sacrifice. We can all share that hope of sins forgiven and of that eternity with God, but we need to ask for it. And the first step is to confess our sins, saying that we are sorry and asking for forgiveness and God's leading. As part of that, we enable God to work in us more as he takes the steering wheel of our lives, directing our paths. We all need to do this. And if you have not done this yet, can I encourage you to do so this morning? The road is not always easy, but it's absolutely worth it. You might be thinking about areas where you have lost or reduced your hope due to a variety of reasons, whatever that might be. If so, then our encouragement is to regain that hope that he is able to do, remember that word, superabundantly more than we could ask or imagine. If we stopped asking God for things, we can start again. If we've got forgotten what to ask for, we can set reminders. And if we've lost faith, then we remain, need to remember who it is that is promising, for he who promised is faithful. Think back to that lemon tree, at which point I'm supposed to point to a, a picture of the lemon tree. <laughs> Imagine a fake lemon tree. <laughs> it is possible that God can make a lemon tree live within a building, even a wet, damp, cold building. And maybe one of the reasons that we don't see it is we don't have the hope. Perhaps what I need to get away from here, and my takeaway from this more from this, is to be able to hope for a lemon tree, a real lemon tree to grow inside. 
maybe a spurious example. But we need to have hope for things to happen. And perhaps we need to remember not to lose hope, but instead to remember who God is, how much he loves us, and how powerful it is. He is. I'd just like us to take a couple of moments in silence, perhaps just with eyes closed, just to think about that question for us as to where we have lost hope. As to what the answer to that question might be for us. And to bring that before God. Thank you, Lord, for this reminder this morning of the hope we have in you. Thank you for the reminder of your power to be able to act and respond. And thank you for the reminder of your love and the offer of being set right with you. We ask this morning that you would reboot our hope. <coughs> we would have a fresh sense of what you can do and that we would bring that before you in prayer. Father God, I pray that we would have a fresh sense of your love and compassion for us. And we dare to say, Lord, that we ask for a fresh sense of your power of your ability, of your superabundant ability to respond. Open our eyes, enlarge our heart, give us more of a sense of who you are and what you want us to do. Enable us to do that by the power of your spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll stand in closing to remind <coughs> ourselves as to how great God is. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. <coughs>
Father God, we thank you for this reminder of your power that is available to us. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fill us mm. super abundantly mm. today, tomorrow, and the days to come, that we may be your people, that we may do your work. Help us to show your love, your joy, your peace, your compassion, and the hope of salvation to those that we're in contact with. Yes. Enable us to do that by the power of your spirit and for your glory's sake. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh, if you'd like someone to pray with you, then please do stay in here. There's more tea and coffee served uh, through.